Hi everybody, welcome to the VQ and A. I'm going to be answering some questions. There's so many questions to be answered from you that uh, I've just done a wee batch of them and then I'm going to do some more for you later on. So we'll break it up over a wee bit of time. And uh, keep the questions coming. Loving it. Enjoy. Emma Hardwell, hello, how are you? Hope you're fine and well. You've asked me a question. Any ideas how we can celebrate our lockdown birthdays? Good question. Because uh, I recently had my birthday and uh, I had a cake and I had a, a bit to eat cake. Uh, that kept me busy. Um, was it very good? Was it up to James Martin's standards? He's very good. He's very good. Um, and I think it's like, you know, we, we, uh, we put out wee stickers saying happy birthday and trying to make the best of it, you know, as you can. We had a wee sing song, which was always good. Um, got my presents. And I guess it's just, you know, put a smile on it. We, I kind of did a lot, I think in these lockdowns, right, you do a lot of reflecting. And so I kind of, when my birthday came, well, I was just kind of made me think of other birthdays and uh, how much, how special they are. And, uh, you know, I would have had no better place to do than to share it with my family and my home. You know, so from that point of view, it was, uh, I was a one-one situation. So Emma, are you having a birthday coming up? If you are, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Emma, happy birthday to you. <laughs> Good question. 74 Har. Hello Mr. Ray. My question is, if you could have four people, living or dead, around your place for a wee dram, who would you choose? Hmm. That's a good question. Who would I choose? I think I would love to have a Groucho Marge. Groucho, Groucho Marx. I loved him. I loved uh, the Marx Brothers, Dead Races, those movies. I can remember fondly watching them on the TV with my pop, with my dad. He liked um, the Marx Brothers and he liked Abbott and Costello. I guess I guess I, like, I quite liked Abbott and Costello, but the Marx Brothers for me won every time. Uh, Groucho Marx for one. Who else? Mm. Mm. Marla Monroe. I guess it would be nice to have to have uh, someone like her around the table. You know, she was she's she's quite a fascinating character, isn't she? When you when you read all the things you read about her and the autobiographies, I think she would she would have been good fun to have as a, a dinner guest. Um, Muhammad Ali. <sighs> uh, yeah, that would be just. That would be awesome. Um, and David Bowie. David Bowie, I think, really was, uh, was an absolute genius. I'd love to have him round. So, yeah, that's the four I'd like to have for dinner or a wee dram. Do you know what? There's so many people you, you could, uh, that you'd love to break bread with, you know, from uh, from way, way, way back. And, uh, you know, but if I had the chance, I'd love better to sit with my man, Dad, again, and, uh, and my brother. They're, they're important. They're important too. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'd love to, have, love to have Sunday dinner with them again. That's a great question. Thanks, 74. Ha. Janet Gardner. Hi, Janet. Uh, the current lockdown has given folk time to think and reflect on life. If you could go back and give your 16-year-old self any advice, what would it be? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, the, the hindsight... You know, to go back. I guess the advice is to be, I think when you get a wee bit older, you, you learn to stay in the moment and not always be thinking about the future. You know, I, my 16 year old self was full of dreams and aspirations. You know, and I'm happy to say that most of them have unfolded in my life. And I, you know, I'm blessed from that point of view. Um, I guess, I guess the, the, the thing is, is that I managed to travel around the world on a song and there's been nothing better for that and you're right on this time I'll say again on this lockdown you do reflect and, and I think that's a good thing you know it makes you think you know when you have to sit with yourself and sometimes just think about uh, past times or thinking about your childhood or you know very easily it's very easy for me to go upstairs and live inside here rent free but you know I think uh, on lockdown Focus on the positive every time and, and if you go back and think of your memories, make sure they're good ones. That's a great question, Janet. Oh yeah, 
you know, and don't stay up too late. Shane Roberts. All right, Shane. Hi, Marty. Thanks for the songs. Love to hear Let the Sun Mock You Home. Good song. Love that song. Really close to me, that. Also, if there was one song out there you wish you had written, what would it be? Have I told you lately that I love you? You know, that Van Morrison song is just... That whole album Poetic Champions Compose is a great record to go and listen to. It never see, it never grows old. You know, it's like a... Yeah, it's like a great piece of work by Van Morrison. Really, really love it. And... Uh, I... Anything poetic from Poetic Champions Compose. Such a good writer. Let me see, has I ever got there? The sun walk you home. When you're tired of living and you feel you can go on, there'll be an angel on your shoulder now telling you that you're wrong. So let the sun walk you home, my love. Let it wrap you up in its loving arms. Let the sun walk you home, my love. And bring you on home to me. Oh, that song in Memphis. Love Memphis. Thanks for the question, Shane. Ah, Caroline. What's the strangest gift you have been given by a fan as we can be bonkers? Yes, you are bonkers, and that's why I love you for what you do. You always get you know, you're always greeted with smiles when I at the stage door when I when I roll up to do my shows. And uh, after the shows you're always there, you know, to say hello. Uh, yeah, but you know what? See if I ate all the cakes and all the chocolate that you give me, I would be like jab of the hut. But I'm there, I'm not complaining, you know, I'm quite sweet tooth, that's for sure. And uh, the strangest gifts. Well, I know, I know who you are, Caroline, and you're very, very good with the pen. You, uh, you, you've got a great eye. You're a good, you're a good artist. Yes, you are. I believe it's, it's the same, Caroline. Yes, it is. And uh, but the strangest thing I've ever been given. Oh, oh, I remember. I was doing Chicago, the musical. And uh, I was doing it in Dublin, in the point, and it was this was a few years back. And I came outside, and there was a lady there, and she was uh, she told me that she was ninety four years of age, and she had brought me a tin of mushy peas <laughs> because she'd heard that I liked mushy peas, and uh, she dropped me off a tin of mushy peas. Just doesn't get much better than that, does it? <laughs> it really doesn't. That was a good one. Ah, God bless her. Great question, Caroline. Tracy Dunn. Hi, Marty. My question is, if we were in lockdown together, brackets if only. Nice. And we were having a meal together, what would it be? What's your all-time, what's your all-time favourite dish to cook me? Oh, great. Um, okay, what about this? Maybe a wee bit of sea bass. I like sea bass. And I would, uh, I would, um, coconut sea bass. You put a wee shell on it. You, you kind of bake it, you know, and you cover it with uh, coconut. And you bake it and you serve it on a bed of wild rice with a mango and papaya salsa. With a creme fraiche, with Thai basil creme fraiche infusion. <laughs> Got it. Got a bit chefy there. I like fish dishes. I like cooking, I like langoustines, and you know, I've got, uh, I, I was a vegetarian for many years, and uh, then suddenly, you know, I just, uh, you know, I just thought to myself, you know, sometimes I just want to eat some fish, and uh, you know, I went back on and ate, uh, and ate some uh, and eat meat now and again, and um, so I, I guess it uh, uh, my, uh, and and I can make a good pie. I'm a good. I'm, I can make a good pie. Um, and what's the secret ingredient to all dishes? Love. <laughs> uh, so Tracy, I hope that answers uh, your question. Sarah Oakton. Hi, Sarah. Would truly love you to carry on doing these videos. It's it's fab seeing you. Question. What would be your preferred career? Not music, musicals, etc. Or what would you have done? I would have been a chef. Definitely a chef. 
I always wanted to be a chef. Um, I love food. Uh, you know, and I, I, I think it's a, a food to me is harmony. You know, if it brings people around the table and eating, uh, uh, all my all, all my memories of growing up you know, for me was, you know, having when my mum and dad had parties and foods, and they would have put on a wee spread and stuff like that. And so food's important. You know, food's a, a, as I said, it brings harmony. So I think I would have loved to have been a chef. Um, I remember doing the, those lot of things at school where you would uh, bake cakes and. I made a Bavarian apple flan, and it's still legendary. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we would uh, take it home and uh, after at school. And I think that's, you know, I think watching my granny and my mum cook is where it all started for me. You know, because I think that's, uh, I think that's where, where I always associate. Like, for instance, every, my mother always made soup, always made pots of soup, 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 soup. Ah, oh, you know, we'll have another pot of soup, I'll stick it on, I'll make a pot of soup. And uh, so, I can always remember opening a door and going into my house and always smelling uh, uh, homemade soup. So, I guess that's where my love and passion came from, uh, yeah, for cooking. So, good question, Sarah. Hope that answers it. Sherry Sawyer. Your music has seen me through many rough, sad times in my life. Sorry to hear that, but the, the tough times. Over the years, what type of songs resonate with you at trying times? Thank you for many happy memories you've given us all. Love to love. Sherry, that's a great question because I think music is therapy. You know, there's nothing better than if you're having a happy day than sit, sticking on a bit of Marvin Gaye or if you're feeling a bit of reflective, listening to um, uh, your favourite piece of music, and be that you know, uh, old school R and B or whatever, whatever floats your boat. I think it's music's such a powerful thing because it's it's, it's a big sense memory. You know, you can hear certain songs and they take you to a place and a time in your life when you hear it on the radio. You come back and it'll make you reflect and think of a time in your life when uh, uh, it was. Example: Boogie Wonderland, Earth, Wind and Fire. Love that song, but every time I hear it. It's a mixed blessing because it takes me back to uh, like uh, the first disco I went to in the school and being very, very, very nervous about to go up and ask a girl to dance. I am happy to say that she accepted. And once I started busting a few shapes, uh, uh, no, I didn't work out good that. So, you know, I think music is therapy and music is power. And it's a good place to go. It's good to climb into three and a half minutes of just pure escapism. Love it. It's a great question, Sherry. All the best. Pauline Campbell. Hey Marty. Hey Pauline, what's up? Where is the most memorable venue you have sang in and why? Hmm. Oh, first venue that popped into my head there. Uh, Dublin. Dublin. I love playing Dublin. And uh, the Borgar Theatre in Dublin is, is, is a place that I, uh, I played recently and just absolutely adored it. When you seem to get an, a, an audience that just clicks with you and uh, you feel the songs are in the pocket and it seems effortless to sing and, and you have a, 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 you know, a great audience. That was a special gig for me, that one in Dublin. I really loved that. And uh, Limerick too, I had a great, I, I did a, a few dates in, in Ireland, which is just wonderful for me recently. Um, what else? Oh, the, you get the big, the big uh, venues like Madison Square Gardens or the Hollywood Bowl or, you know, these big Royal Albert Hall or London Palladium. These are brilliant. But, you know, there's, there's, when I go out to have a show, the audience is so full of energy and enthusiasm for what you do. You can't help but tap into that. You know, people happen, no venues. You know, it's great. Sometimes, I mean, it's special when you say I'm playing the Albert Hall tonight. But... When you get a good venue and you get a good audience, that's priceless and you're just out to have a good time because no one really ever buys a ticket to say, right, they will go, well, let's go and have a bad time, you know? So if you can be the catalyst for the wee party that's about to unfold with your songs, then bring it on. Good question, Paul. All the best. Hi, Ian Morgan. You've asked me a question. This is a good one. Probably one of Clyde Bang's most famous sons. I thank you. What did you enjoy most about growing up in Clyde Bang and is there anything you still miss about it? Yeah, loads of things. You know, I always equate uh, 
my childhood to Clybank. And when I was growing up, I had a wee paper round that I used to sell the Evening Times. And I can remember fondly when Singer's uh, factory machine would empty out and uh, I would be there to sell my papers. You would hear the big foghorn and you would sell the Evening Times. And if I could rush down to the bottom of Kabawi Road in Clybank, you would get all the workers coming out from John Brown's and they'd buy a paper as they walked into the pub. There was a couple that was a, there were, at the bottom of Kabawi Road, there was a few a few pubs there, the Seven Seas and the, the Borough Bar, I remember well, when I'd position myself there and shout, Evening Times, Evening Times. So they're the kind of memories that spring to mind. And going to the the cinema hall in Clydebank, where I saw loads of, loads of movies. You know, I saw Star Wars there, I saw Love and Light, Love and Light Die. Um, I think the first movie I saw there was in the late 60s, uh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. <laughs> it's a great movie. Um, is there anything I miss about it? Yeah, of course there is. You know, I've still got friends there and, you know, uh, family. So, that, you know, so when I go back to Clybank, I like to take a wee look about and also uh, go to Dam Your Park where I have fond memories. And there's a, a gentleman in uh, Clybank called Owen, I can't remember the second, his second name, but he took lots of pictures of uh, McG McGuigan. He took lots of uh, pictures of Clybank that I remember. And uh, so I, I often go and have a wee look at his work. And I, uh, uh, there's a wee website called Call Yourself a Banker, and I go and have a wee look in that too. So yeah, great question. Yeah, that's a good one. Hope that answers it. Bye.